From the School of Communication at American University in Washington, D.C., this is Media in the Mix, a space where we explore topics in communication at the intersection of social justice, tech, and innovation, and popular culture. Have you ever felt like the nine to five life wasn't for you? Maybe you felt like pursuing entrepreneurship or a side hustle. Did the pandemic highlight your additional workplace needs? On today's episode, we speak to School Communication alums, Jack Fitzpatrick and Megan Elizabeth Clark about finding their own pathways to entrepreneurship, how corporate and freelancing work differs from each other and how their time at AU has influenced their careers today. Check it out. Meg, Jack, I'm super excited for you guys to be on the podcast today. I know for the three of us, we have a little bit of history together. We all were in SOC at the same time. Jack, you and I are the same year. And Meg, I believe you were maybe a year or two ahead of us. Yeah, 2015 is when I graduated. So, Oh, yeah. Okay, so we graduated in 2016. So yeah, just yeah. one year. But we were all also SOC ambassadors together. Oh, so that was a fun time. <laughs> we sure were. It was a fun time. Yes. I love that <laughs> It was awesome. And so now you guys are living the entrepreneur and freelancer life. And so we're going to get into that a little bit today. So if you guys could start off by introducing yourselves for people who don't know who you are, but also just a little bit of what you do. Yeah. Jack, you want to take it away? <laughs> Sure. My name is Jack Fitzpatrick, and I graduated from the School of Communication in 2016. And I have been a freelance communication professional, social media strategist for about six years now. Uh, and it's and it started in, in college and around that time. So, and I help businesses manage their social media communities and, and help them achieve their goals. Currently, I'm based in New York City, surprisingly, but I spent a lot of my career so far in Minneapolis, Minnesota, which is a really lovely community to live in. I really enjoyed living there. And yeah, hello, my name is Megan. I, um, like I mentioned, graduated from American SOC as well in 2015 with a degree in public communications. I think that's actually strategic communications now. I stayed in DC for about five years after graduating. I loved kind of working and living in the city. I primarily worked in the field of human resources, some marketing as well. A huge kind of component or, or part of that was working in learning and development for an HR team. So running a lot of new hire onboarding, firm-wide training, leadership development, I was a recruiter for a bit as well, so kind of dabbled in in that side of the space. And then for the past two years, I have been working freelance as a copywriter, which has nothing to do with copyrights. I get that a lot. Um, <laughs> it's uh, pr primarily what I, I work in the health and wellness space, supporting clients, developing marketing content to really build their organic traffic. So helping drive people to their site through high quality copy and content. So that's I've done a lot of like landing pages, website copy, blogs are pretty popular, email marketing, and kind of anything under the sun of SEO, search engine optimization is kind of my, my wheelhouse at the moment. Awesome. So you guys seem to have a plethora of just skills and abilities. So from what it seems like, I know both of you guys have experience in the traditional realm, but also now in this freelance entrepreneurship world. And so what would you say is the biggest difference between the two or what have you experienced? Yeah, I mean, I can start. I mean, I think for me, my path to freelancing, because I was, I was primarily in the traditional kind of workforce, like I was mentioning for about five years in HR. And then my path kind of started to freelancing about a month before the pandemic started in like February 2020. I was let go from a job, which is such an awkward time to be looking for a job, right? It was like during, during COVID. And I think for me, like so many people who went freelance, I think part of it was maybe you're kind of forced into it, kind of thinking about, all right, what's next? But I think part of it is also just kind of craving a little bit more of that flexible lifestyle, that that opportunity to kind of work with the people you want to work with, do the projects you want to do, and kind of dictate your own terms a little bit. I think for me, the silver lining of the pandemic was like, it kind of forced me to kind of think about what do I want? And, and that was kind of it 
Yeah, absolutely. I want to backtrack to something that you talked about, Jack, with after you graduated. And I'm sure this will probably encourage some students who are listening. So you said you had a hard time finding a job and you kind of just created your own thing. And I know for me, after I graduated, I went to grad school after AU. And even after that, I was having a hard time finding a job, but I was able to get some contract and freelance work. And that really helped me out in terms of experience. And so I want you to talk a little bit about what did that process look like for you? Because I think it's also an avenue that more students or recent graduates should probably look into. Yeah, I really started my business right after I graduated because I had a tough time finding a job. And so I got antsy and I said, I said, if no one wants to hire me, I'm just going to do it myself and I'm going to hire myself. And so that is what I ended up happening in 2016. And so my, my business has grown and shrank over time based on what else I'm doing. Like I, I had a full-time, uh, I was at an agency full-time for a couple of years. I had a part-time role for a couple of years. And so what was nice and what is such a great thing about being a freelancer and running your own business is that you can scale it up and down, uh, especially for communication folks like us. You can add a client or, or get rid of a client depending on uh, how it fits into your life. Uh, and that that is a really powerful thing. That experience has me taken charge of how work fits into my life. Between traditional and, and freelance, you're, the big thing that you're shifting is kind of the responsibility and the flexibility. Like those are the two things that I think about the most. Uh, when you're in a traditional workplace, usually you have somebody taking care of insurance. Your taxes, your all that stuff is, is a lot easier. But you may have to tell someone if you're going to the doctor's appointment in the middle of the day. When I went into the my first uh, full-time role, I was like, wait, I can't just go? What's going on here? I just got to go. I, I'm, I'm already in the car. But at the same time, you get things like PTO, which I also didn't understand. When I first worked there, I was like, what, I can just take a week off and no one will talk to me? And I get paid for that versus someone who's always on. The difference, I think, is what you have to kind of do yourself. And you can build a team around you as a freelance person, a pre freelance professional. Like I have a, someone who helps me with taxes and retirement and things like that, which is, is good. I have people in place to help me make it all work. So yeah, because I was building my business a little bit in college and I was helping different small businesses around, I had some things that were already brewing, but that process kind of looks like tapping into your community and seeing who needs help. That was where I started. And I was, I was just like, I think I could really help you here. And then we'd start with that. And it could even just be a project or back in, back in 2012, uh, which was the heyday of Facebook. I can get your Facebook page set up. I can maybe get you on Instagram. Like if you want, if you want to be edgy, we can get you on Instagram, which is hilarious now. But tapping into your network, seeing if there's work that's just right there. And then I also got on freelance sites like Upwork. If you've ever heard of that one, that's one that I used. And so I got on there and I said, I can write, I can do, I can write social media posts. I can write press releases. These are all things I'm trained to do. And so I ended up writing press releases for a vegan cruise line in Norway. Oh, wow. I wrote, I know, I don't think that ever got, the sad thing is, you know, it's, I don't know if that ever got published because I just handed it to someone and, and they, they ran with it. I did, I did some PR work for this uh, EDM group in Miami and it was just like, it just random things, but it was great to have a couple more pieces in my portfolio, some things that I could go to, to prospective employers or even new clients and say, yeah, I, I did this press release. You can look at it if you'd like. It's live and it's, you know, you can see it. And so I linked to all that stuff on my website and things like that. So that's kind of how it started. And then it, then it just kind of took on a life of its own. So I know both of you touched a little bit on COVID. So I just want to 
wanted to get into that. So how did the pandemic kind of change or influence what you do now? Like how were you able to adapt? And I know Meg, you talked about how you started right, like literally right on the precipice of the pandemic. So yeah, it was, yeah, it was kind of my catalyst. I think I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would resonate with this where I feel like the pandemic, I mean, it shifted the world upside down and it, it kind of gave you a little bit of an opportunity to have a different perspective on things. I know for me, for a while before that point, I had just been feeling like something was off in, in my nine to five. I think I felt just a little trapped, a little like, oh my gosh, you know, this is going to be the rest of my life. I could kind of see the ladder that I was climbing in the future I was kind of marching toward. And I just like wasn't really passionate about it. But I think I, like so many people, was under this impression that it's like, you're on this path, you have this career, you know, I worked for five years in HR, why would I step off that path? You know, you've worked for for so long in this, you've been really kind of building up to the point that you're at today. And I think, for me, the pandemic was like, it just shifted things a bit, it gave me the chance to say, hey, maybe this, this lifestyle, this more flexible lifestyle that you've always wanted to pursue, but you just assumed was impossible. Maybe now is the time to try. I mean, like I mentioned, I was kind of let go. And I think that was like the ultimate blessing for my career because I really was unhappy where I was. And now it was kind of like a catalyst for change. Before we got on this call, I was like doing some research just because I'm like, how many people are freelancing right now? And Jack mentioned the platform Upwork. Upwork. They did a survey in 2021 where about 59 million Americans right now, or in the past like 12 months, have done freelance work. So that's about that's like one third of the work of the entire workforce is doing some kind of freelance work. Yeah. So it's pretty, it's definitely gaining in popularity. And I think a huge, I think, you know, I think the pandemic is a huge reason for that. I think people are the world, the workforce is much more accepting of like flexible online, you know, anyone with a laptop and the right skill set can kind of get the job done. And I think it, it opens up the doors for people that are kind of interested in pursuing a different, a different kind of path outside of maybe a more traditional one. It's funny because Meg and I were in a similar timeline, which is so funny because I decided to take, to leave my, my full-time agency job and build out my freelance business more in February of 2020 before, before, uh, and it was because I wanted to work remotely, which is, hilarious. I was like, I really want to work remote. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to make, and then the company I was working for went fully remote within, within four weeks. And so and I know I probably, if I thought more, maybe I could, have, I don't know, but it's been a roller coaster to say the least for all of us. And the silver lining is that COVID really forced me. And I know so many other people to think about think harder about what it means to work. COVID made us think harder about what it means to work and how we want to work and how we can kind of make it better fit with our lives. And so that has been a process and it, 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 it doesn't come, it, it doesn't come overnight. You have to, yeah, it, it's a, and I'm sure you're experiencing this too, Meg, where you are doing this thing and you might be thinking, oh, is this the right path? Is this the right thing? And how can I best optimize this process to make it better for me? And how can, how can I strike that balance that I really want? And, and it's, it doesn't happen overnight and it still hasn't happened for me, but you know, it's a, it's a journey. So it's, it's figuring out the best way to work is what is what COVID kind of challenged me to do. I love that. I love how both of you guys saw it as this is an avenue, something new that I'm going to do, but I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to run with it. And I think that just proves to the success um, of you guys' business, of what you guys have been doing. And yeah, so even with that, I'm sure you've heard of the term, the great resignation. Um, <laughs> That is going on right now. A lot of people are desiring just more work-life balance, working remotely, um, you know, just different benefits because obviously the pandemic has just had such an effect on all of us. And so what 
what are your thoughts on the great resignation, but also what do you think that that might mean for people who are seeking out freelance and entrepreneurship? The great resignation is dot, dot, dot. Don't even get me started on the great resignation. (laughs) I think it's the great resignation. I think is, has been a long time coming with, with COVID at least uh, because people are exactly what we were talking about before, taking a look at at what they want to do. Uh, and they're trying to reach that goal and that, that involves them making a pivot. Something I see, uh, is for freelance professionals, all these people leaving is more potential work because these businesses that are feeling it with the great resignation and they have teams leaving or employees leaving, there's still work that needs to be done. So that I think it's a big opportunity for people to get into the freelance game and see what they can they can do with it, but also just find, even if it's not starting your own business and becoming a freelancer, it's you can find another job that maybe makes more sense for you and there's a big reshuffling and that's kind of cool kind of scary but kind of cool yeah i agree i agree it's i like the word reshuffling because i feel like that accurately describes it because it's a little bit i feel like the great resignation is centered on people being like you know what i don't want to do this anymore like i'm kind of tired of this <laughs> and i like totally resonate because that was me you know for, for so long i was just like something's off i'm not really passionate about this and i think it does offer a unique opportunity for freelance because i think there's always going to be projects that need to get that done there's work that that needs to get done and i think it is kind of helping push people maybe to think about what do I want and not just like what's going to be the best for this job that I'm in, but just what's going to be the best for me. And I think it's sad that sometimes we don't put that first, you know, but I think, you know, part of what I've had to kind of realize and, and think about when it comes to the world of freelancing is like, there are pros and cons to kind of like entering into, into the freelance life. I think being your own boss comes with, it's like, benefits like you know Jack was talking about of like choosing the projects you want to work on the clients you want to work with there's that sense of like empowerment of like I am in charge here you know this is I can like Jack was saying I can take time off I can just leave this is my business this is my baby that sense of ownership but then also on the other side of that is like you are your own boss which comes with its own pressure a little bit too I think it's establishing that work life balance with any job is really can be really hard and i think sometimes when you when it's something that you're owning and you're creating there's just a little bit more pressure there so i think there's there's things to consider if you're considering the life of freelance or entrepreneurship especially with this with this great resignation kind of having people think about it and i think it's important to weigh both sides of it the fact that you're not going to have the steady paycheck but also on the other end you have this like limitless potential and opportunity limitless potential yeah it's true it is you could just keep growing potentially you don't have to ask for a raise you build your raise you know (laughs) yeah yeah you determine so much as a entrepreneur that you have some control granted you know some people might not buy in your services but i think for communication for people who have a communication background and, and a marketing background too, you have a skill set that is really diverse. Like you, you can do a lot of different things and, and writing and communicating being such an important part of, of sales and entrepreneurship in general, they, they fit nicely together. So I think that's a cool opportunity that people have. And that SOC in particular, and bringing it back, it kind of empowered me to have, like, I can do a lot of different things. I can be a Swiss army knife of communicating. And that's a really cool thing. Yeah. That's such a good point too, Jack. Like, cause I think I, a limiting factor for me or like a big fear for me going freelance is like, I don't have what it takes or I don't have the skill set or the specialty or whatever. Like, but you do, I think, especially if you're graduating from AU, if you're graduating from SSC, it's like you, you've you been taught how to work in this real world environment, whether it was through internships or in your classes, like you've had that hands-on experience. And I think 
like especially in the world of copywriting, like you don't need to be a professional writer to go out and try it for, and see if it works for you. I think you have to just have the have the kind of willingness to learn, to make mistakes and to kind of improve upon that and, and lean on what you know, which is a lot, a lot more than you might realize. Absolutely. So walk me through your workflow, through your process. I'm sure no day is the same. Like, what does that look like? I know that might be a little different depending on the circumstance, but just a general idea so that people know like what that, that they can envision it. The cool thing about running your own business and being a freelance marketer is that you can kind of choose your own adventure on how you build things and attack different projects. And you can be as hands-on or hands-off as, as you want. When I was earlier in my career, I was just, I would just write a, a press release and then hand it to someone and then they would pay me for the press release. And so that, that process would look like I'm learning about the company, I'm doing a little research, I'm writing the press release, and then I, I'm just handing it off. Nowadays, what I do is, is more full service. When, when you work with me, you get the full Jack Fitzpatrick experience. You're getting research into your company, research on the market overall. You're getting kind of something I like to do is I like to look at their current metrics and, and what's going on on their social media channels. So for this example, this project would be running social media account for a business. They hand me the keys and I rock and roll. So I'm, I'm looking at their metrics, looking at their results in the past, and then looking at their company goals. And then I'm charting a path forward for us to work together to accomplish those goals. And so I'm building the strategy, I'm writing copy, I'm working with internal stakeholders and maybe even external vendors. So, so may, maybe we need a, a, I don't do this a lot, but maybe we need a photo shoot done of the product. So, or maybe I can work with, with someone contact to get photos. So finding out how to actually get the work done. And then I look at results and I look at how we can make it better next time. And then the loop repeats and, and we can keep making great work together. I don't know if it's helpful to talk through like how I started getting clients because I think that and then how because how I get them today is like a little different than maybe how I started, but it could be valuable just to speak to like how do you even get your first client? <laughs> um, because when so when I started, I like I mentioned, I had just been laid off, so I I kind of went dove in head first into freelancing. I know for some people it's starting kind of more as like a side gig, but I, so I started kind of like full time. And, and the first thing that I did to help me kind of find clients is, is networking. I think setting up conversations with people in my network who were doing this job already, who were content creators, copywriters, talking with them and being like, okay, what's your process? What's your day to day, right? Like, how are you getting clients? How are you like finding work? And then kind of learning from them. I, I even took a course online on copywriting. It was a big step for me just to be like, okay, let's get some confidence in this. Let's see what this is all about. And then I went to work, right? I just, I reached out to people in my network who were business owners and was like, hey, do you need help? You know, like, this is what I can do. This is how I can help. I started sending out cold emails to businesses that I was excited about that I was like, they seem like they're doing some really awesome stuff. I think I could help. And that sounds like really scary. But in reality, what you're doing is just being like, hey, this is my name. I love what you're doing here, X, Y, Z. And this is how I can help build your business by doing, you know, whatever it might be. And I think in the beginning, it was really hard for me to kind of make that initial push just because I was still building out my portfolio. And that's kind of where the network came in because I would get projects with people that I knew that were like first or second degree connections. And that's where I started to add items to my portfolio, like content that I was creating for them, um, either for free or kind of at a discounted rate just to kind of get my feet wet. And then I was able to share that those portfolio items in the cold emails I was sending and I would get response and I would get people kind of responding back and being like, Hey, as it so happens, you know, we're, we're trying to build our, our blog out or, you know, we're doing a rebrand of our website and we could really use some help. And then I would set up a call with them, get on the phone, be like, what are, what are you trying to tackle here? Like, how can I help you and talk through 
kind of their biggest challenges. And I would send the proposal over like, here, this is how I can help you. This is what it's going to cost. And then we kind of hit the ground running. Kind of like Jack was saying, it's like the full experience, like helping them think about not only what their goals are and how we're marching towards those, but like, where are you today? Where do you want to be? Because I think content, if you're just creating content for the sake of creating content, you're kind of missing this like, broader strategy this broader goal of like okay what is the goal of this piece that we're creating and who are we hoping to attract ultimately where are we directing them on on the pipeline and so I think for me it was like starting to build confidence with people in my network first who are my clients and then using those portfolio items to get more clients and now I'm at a point where I have a solid client load and most of my new clients now kind of come from from like word of mouth or from my network or just kind of people reaching out to me. And I think you just keep building with each with each person that you work with, which is really exciting. I love that. So what I'm really hearing is that a lot of this, it takes work, one, it takes strategy, but it also is a very forward thinking, like what's next? For me, I know self-awareness is really important. And I think that's something that I've gotten a lot as a as an entrepreneur with my name on the business and you too, Meg, like our, that, like we are this business, an extension of who we are in the network we've built over the last six, seven years, you know, and that's a beautiful thing, but I like to stay picky about, about who I work with and, and, and how you can build this, this life that you're trying to build, you know, through this business, uh, build this kind of work-life balance that works. It's tricky, but fun, but worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like Jack was saying, it's like it, you you own this, right? It's like you you can reach out to who you want to reach out to. You can, you know, I think I've gotten to a point where I actually felt like I had too many clients. So I'm like, all right, I need to scale back and like take a step back a little bit. And I think that's within your control too to say, how much do you want to work? Who do you want to work with? What am I liking? What am I not liking? How do I lean more into what I like? How do I you know, scale back from what's not working. And so it's a process. I certainly would not say that it's like easy. I think there's sometimes like this perception I, I'll tell friends like, oh, I work freelance. Like, and they're like, oh, you could just like take a day off and, you know, you're just super flexible. Like, and I'm like, yes and no. I mean, th- there's the balancing act, like any job of, of kind of making it work and, and leaning into what what is and what isn't working for you, I think is is always going to be a challenge, whether you're freelance or or nine to five. (laughs) So yeah, I think that both of you guys brought up really good points just about your experience, about going into um, this new age of the workforce that we're going into. I know some people have been doing it for a long time, but it's becoming a lot more common to be your own boss and to kind of take the skills that you have and that you've learned and kind of run with it. And so for you guys, um, with being forward thinkers and what you do, what do you foresee for your future? I know that might be a little bit of a tough question to answer, but what do you foresee? And even like, is there a company or influencer or a type of project that you would like to tackle um, somewhere down the line? Hmm. It's a good one. This is top of mind for me at the moment, just because I'm like, I've been working or doing a lot of like content creation and a lot of kind of being front of the line. But I, I want to be more, I think, on the consultation side, kind of especially SEO. I have so many clients who come to me who are like, we, we want you to just create some blogs, you know, just go at it. And it's like so much of the content creation process, like I was mentioning, is like having a strategy aligned with that and thinking about, you know, what keywords are you trying to rank for? What do you already rank for? Like, what are your competitors kind of ringing for? And and having a little bit of an idea of what's going to get us to page one, I think. And SEO is search engine optimiz- optimization is just so confusing, I think, for a lot of people. Um, and so for me, when I think of like, what's next, like, I want to build something out within the the field of kind of like SEO consultation that's like, where I'm not just helping create the content, but I'm helping think about kind of the broader strategy on what are we marching towards here and helping answer those questions in a way that I can't always do one-on-one. Like I'm only one person. I can't, you know, 
be everyone's SEO consultant, but how do I build out like a course or a product or some kind of offering to just demystify the process a little bit and kind of help business owners, especially small business owners, think about how they grow because so much of organic traffic is just being not only authentic with your copy but being strategic with your copy and I think it's it's a lot so I'm excited about seeing where that goes and trying to I'm trying to take more courses and learn and kind of figure that out so we'll see but I think that's that's kind of my thinking right now is just trying to be more of the the consultant I think I am someone who knows that this life is going to be part of it like this entrepreneurship life is something that I'm very drawn towards. And I know it's something that will be with me for the rest of my career, either in small or big. But I have some secrets in the pipeline. And I think that it's going to be fun. I just, you know, with my business, with my work, I just try and have fun. And if I keep doing that, if I'm, if I'm, if I'm able to do that, that's all I'm trying to do. And so even if, yeah, uh, if I do a full-time role in a more traditional place, if I do a, a freelance project, I'm always trying to make sure that it, it makes sense for me. And when I'm going forward, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. And I'm learning and writing, and that's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. I love it. I can't wait to see the secrets, what you guys have up your sleeve coming forward. Jack, Meg, thank you so much for this conversation. I know that it will inspire all who listen to it and just have a better sense of what it means to be an entrepreneur or a freelancer in the communication industry. So thank you so much for taking the time. Media in the Mix is a production from the School of Communication at American University. Our podcast is available for listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Anchor, and wherever else you can stream podcasts. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn to see how our community is changing media one step at a time. Catch you on the next one.